Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and the founder of the Spine MDT. In this video, I'm going to discuss the problems that Tiger Woods had with his spine, as well as the different operations he had, and I'm going to explain them to you from the perspective of a spinal surgeon. In order to explain it, I just want to quickly go over the normal anatomy of the spine and some of the problems we saw in Tiger Woods and other golfers, in fact. So if we look at this image here, the spine is made up of a stack of bones starting deep in the pelvis, making its way up all the way up to the skull. There are seven of these bones in the neck area, known as the cervical spine, 12 in the thoracic area, the chest area inside your rib cage, then there's the thoracic spine, and then five in the lower back, the lumbar spine. And then deep in the pelvis, you have the sacral spine where the bones are all fused together, and then you have your tailbone, the coccyx. If we zoom in, um, each, bo each bone is called a vertebrae. It's made up of a cylindrical block of bone with an arch at the back. So this is the front, and this is the back, and at each level, a nerve leaves the spine. And between each block of bone, you have a cushion known as a disc. So if we have a look at a cross section here, this being the front, this being the back, this is the arch of bone at the back that protects and houses the bundle of nerves that run down the spine. Um, this is the disc here at the front and the arch of bone at the back. And then sometimes what can happen, a disc can herniate out and pinch a nerve. The Tiger Woods story generated a lot of interest in the spine care community. And an article was published in the Journal of Neurosurgery Spine Edition, looking at the biomechanics of golf and the spine. And what it demonstrated is during the upswing, the rotational forces between the lower vertebrae around the disc space causes wear and tear and shearing and tearing of the lining of the disc. And then the downswing, during the downswing, this lateral compressive force causes further uh, degeneration or wear and tear. That tearing can then cause a herniation where the contents of the disc itself, which is a little bit like crab meat, starts to poke out here. You can see on the MRI scan into the spinal canal where the nerves run. When the disc pokes out enough, we then get a condition known as sciatica. If it pokes out enough to pinch a nerve, that can send pain radiating down the leg. So what we know from um, news articles is that he underwent multiple operations um, to start with known as microsurgery, microdecompression or microdiscectomy. Um, um, I think he underwent three or four of these operations for what we know of. And they're carried out under um, a general anaesthetic or very light sedation through a very small wound in the midline of the back. Um, and then under the microscope, a small channel is made down onto the back of the spine where we make a little window at the back of the spine and then shave away that fragment of disc to free up the nerve and that usually alleviates the pain. Normally, we get a good result from this operation. You take the pressure off the nerve, the leg pain goes away. But if we go back to this biomechanical model here, um, the amounts of rotation during a golf swing or any kind of rotation around your waist that go through a single disc level is very small. The spine is actually fairly rigid in terms of its joints. Each segment only moves a small amount, but it's the accumulation of all of them together that create that large rotation that we can perform. If, however, we've torn the disc um, and herniated a bit of disc or operate on it, that segment's now weaker than the rest of the spine until it fully heals up so that when we do rotate rapidly, most of the force gets transmitted through that segment. So recurrent herniations are quite common. Usually they're in about the region of four to five percent of uh, people who've undergone the surgery. But if you're undergoing these types of forces, um, they can be higher. You'll see a link to my YouTube video interview with the famous uh, Professor Stuart McGill, um, a therapist out in Canada who's known as the back mechanic, who's published quite a lot of research on back pain specifically. And he knows a lot about the biomechanics. And in this interview, he explains what happens when a disc gets damaged and the rotational forces go um, around that damaged discs. But in his lot of his research, he also explains mechanisms or things you can do, exercises you can do to try and prevent further damage there. And something he focuses on is creating a type of stiffness, if you like, around that segment by building up the muscles that support it. In the links below, um, I've included an exercise program that's been published in the International Journal of Sports Therapy, uh, Sports Physical Therapy. Um, and these are all evidence-based um, exercises to try and prevent um, injuries 
um, during golf. So have a look at that. Now, if a disc has herniated more than two or three times and been operated on that many times, and then it happens again, um, the consensus is that if surgery is required to fuse up that segment rather than just take out that fragment of disc, that way we can prevent that abnormal motion that generates a lot of back pain. Um, the operation, there's different ways of doing it. The operation that Tiger Woods underwent is called an anterior lumbar interbody fusion or ALIF, A-L-I-F. And that's when you go in through the front of the abdomen, um, you remove all of that disc completely. And then in its place, put in this large breeze block called a cage, which is secured, not all of them, but some of them are secured with these screws to hold it in place, allowing the bone above and below that disc base to fully fuse up and not move abnormally. So here's a post-operative x-ray of an A-lift that I carried out. So a side view of the spine, the front, the back, and here you can see the cage in the disc space that has been completely cleared out. It's jacked up the height of the disc space, corrected the angle nicely, um, and it's secured with screws above and below. And over time, this has fused up. And in Tiger Woods, his operation was quite successful. He returned to golf and did really well. But unfortunately, we heard recently that he has undergone surgery again, which we believe to be another micro discectomy. Now we're speculating here slightly, but given that one level of his spine has been fused, I can only assume that this has been a disc at another level, possibly the level above. One of the problems with fusing this segment of the spine is that you've eliminated all motion from this segment. So the segments above then try to make up for that lack of motion in the segment below. And that can um, accelerate wear and tear, what we call adjacent segment disease. We can prevent that by planning the surgery really carefully. So choosing the right size of cage to go in and jacking up the height uh, correctly, getting the right angles but also more importantly, working in a multidisciplinary team. Um, what I do, I give a lot of oversight to the physiotherapist and osteopaths I work with um, so that we have a good program um, outlined uh, in the exercises I showed earlier uh, to make sure they've got the right program to prevent uh, that adjacent segment disease happening at the level above by conditioning the spine properly. Please click like and subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful.